Hello and welcome. My name is Jerzy Baranowski and I come from AGH University of Science and Technology in Kraków, Poland. Together with my colleagues Waldemar Bauer, Brapa Mularczyk and Bartłomiej Gondek, I want to present to you our talk on process fault detection using STAN. Every country has their own share of industrial processes, such things like raffineries, power plants, chemical processing facilities, all constitute a substantial part of country's economy. While their maintenance is of utmost importance, sometimes faults occur. Of course, reality is much less catastrophic. When we are considering faults, especially in the context of decision support systems, we are not thinking about explosions, more about potential money losses. Generally, safety systems will prevent catastrophic situations. However, they will not stop downtime, and such downtimes lead to substantial costs for the operator. These things, of course, can be mitigated by condition-based maintenance. In order to do so, we need to detect the situation that the fault is about to occur. However, condition monitoring is generally a difficult problem. Process installations are very complex. They include multiple interactions that are hard to quantify. We usually measure only process variables which are needed for continuous operations. We do not have availability of multitude of diagnostic signals that could be useful, but we really don't know that such area needs to be measured until something happens with it. Moreover, while we can have a lot of data, because ev almost every process variable is measured, we mostly have data on healthy states. And faulty states come from degradation, which is really a difficult problem. For example, compressors accumulate dust. Dust makes their efficiency lower. Lowering efficiency, however, is not a monotonous process, because collected dust can fall away from the walls of the machine. In that situation, Observing just efficiency won't give us information about the condition of the system. So, how can we think about process faults? If we have lots of data and we have very well understood and measured fault, there is no problem. We can use any kind of method in order to determine that we can solve the problem. However, we often have very little of no past data of such situations. Diagnostic measurements, as mentioned before, are very scarce, and process measurements that could predict such situation can be interpreted in hindsight, not as predictive options. So we have essentially an outlier detection problem, which can be in some ways considered a black swan using popular nomenclature. So what we've done in our work is that we focused on functional data representation of process variables. We've used data depth for outlier detection and we've joined it with Bayesian modeling in order to quantify the uncertainty that is in the diagnostic process. So what actually we wanted to do, what process control can learn from functional data analysis, which is popular in different areas, is that time series models have many difficulties. In case of process variables, Friel's principal models are theoretically possible because we have support of physics and mathematics that we can create a model that we at least theoretically know how everything interacts with each other. But identification of parameters of that models and getting complete measurements possibilities for that model is not plausible. Moreover, false by itself cannot be modeled. The processes that cause degradation and that introduce the actual fault occurrence in this process are usually unique and very difficult. So we have a lot of time series signals of process variables, sometimes diagnostic signals, and those usually in uh, the literature of the subject are attacked by brute force. So from the time series, we get a lot of features that might seem to stick. So, for example, we compute uh, certain frequencies, certain typical statistics, and we get a vector of parameters that, with a lot of hope, can 
represent the information in the signal properly. Much better option would be create some kind of parametric model. Unfortunately, typical time series models are very inefficient in control applications. That's why we're looking for some different model that would allow us to reduce the dimensionality of thousands of samples in the time series. And for such uh, this, we wanted to focus on spline representation of the signal. So we want to represent our time series measurements with a spline function. Their benefits is that dimension that we might be, will be lower and we will be able to capture local behavior, so the fault occurrence. And how we can recognize the faults even if we have that model? Well, we want to use the data depth statistics. Data depth is an old idea introduced by 2K in the 70s which is generally a method of ordering multivariate data. Depth statistics represents uh, the data set as uh, assigning them values either they are shallow or deep. So we have value, each data point can be assigned a value of between zero and one. There are a set of axioms that formulate data depth statistics, so, so, uh, in a way similar to norm axioms. One of preferences is that such uh, statistic would introduce convex level sets. And idea is that such data that statistic would be allowed to data ordering. Unfortunately, there's a lot of definitions of different data depths and they are not as ubiquitous or as well understood as norm definitions. So there is a really fair game when using depth statistics. In this talk, we focus on a Mahalanobis depth because at least it can be computed, because generally most of depth statistics are very difficult to compute. The, most, the simplest ones, except Mahalanobis, require at least solving eigenproblems of high dimension, or even some of them are NP-complete. Classically, data depths are used with data. However, we wanted to use the Bayesian model in order to use data depth on the distribution in order to get a distribution of data depth both for overall healthy system and for the signals investigated for being false. And for that we used STAN. We've generally used very simple model uh, based on multivariate regression using QR factorization for efficiency. Uh, we've assigned normal and exponential priors with a bit of difficulty coming from the QR factorization, and we've based our computation on in PyStan uh, because generally that's our main tool of work. Uh, we've been uh, conducting prior predictive simulation in order to uh, tune our priors. Finally, we decided to priors for the transport parameters are being set as uh, normal with standard deviation of 0 0.2 and an exponential prior on the uh, standard deviation. We focus on the centered uh, representation, so we will be considering the uh, problem in the of centered values. Our case study is the water tank system. It is a, uh, it's a laboratory system it's a, in our department. It's a small scale system, so it's easily to model and also simulate if needed. However, it exhibits some typical process problems. Let's then look onto the system. As you can see, the multi-tank laboratory system is a steel column consisting of multiple plastic tanks filled with water. We measure water levels in each of using pressure sensors, as illustrated here. From each of the tank, we have an electromagnetic valve that you use for inducing faults and manual valve for water flow. Top tank is a rectangular one. The middle one is a trapezoidal one, and the bottom one is a quarter of a circle. Below them, there is a water reservoir. As you can see, water flows from the top, through the middle, up to the bottom tank, through the reservoir, and with a pump back up again. We can artificially induce faults by opening the electromagnetic valve. 
For our analysis, we will focus on the behavior of faults in our water tank system. Generally, fault propagation introduces smooth. What does it mean? It means that when in our process, somewhere near the start or in earlier phases of operation, a fault occurs, it will be visible in process variables that are related to that position in the system. However, as long as the system propagates, the st how states evolve and effects of the faults are being visible further and further, they are usually visible less and less. In our work, we focused on analyzing the transient states. We focused on three test cases here. Two cases were done using simulation. We've created a first principle model of the process using MATLAB environment and using that we've generated uh, the trajectories of both healthy and faulty states. The problem in our model is that we do not have a good model for the behavior of the electromagnetic valve. So we only were able to modify the proportionality constant of uh, the valve that is in the uh, first principle model. We, however, analyzed faults as introduced in the first tank and observed the values in the second and the third one and the uh, faults introduced in the second tank and again observed second and third tank values. We've also supported our analysis with an experiment. We've conducted 10 flows of healthy state operation of our uh, water tank system and then we've opened the electromagnetic valve in the top tank for a brief period. For our analysis, we centered the data in order to, instead of analyzing the complete waveform of a transient state, we've only analyzed its deviation from the standardized wa waveform. In the next few slides, we will show how our model operated. For each of the analyze system, we've created a baseline model of uh, our healthy state. And this baseline model captured most of the uncertainty of, uh, the of the simulated data. In this case, we have a water level in the second, uh, uh, second tank is deviation from the median waveform. The black dashed lines are the 95% or uh, interval from the observed data and in our cold ribbon plot we have a 90% quantiles and low. in the left bottom plot we have fit of our spline model to the state investigated for being faulty and using the samples of, uh, of B spline coefficients for the faulty state we've computed data depth in a lighter shade of yellow, we have a data depth histogram for our B-spline model. So we took our 4,000 samples generated by, uh, which stand for our healthy state model and we compute its data depth. Then we've used the samples generated for, for the considered outlier state and we again compute outlier, uh, computed the Mahalanobis distance for it using estimated mean and covariance from the sample of health. In considerate case, the data depth of the 40 states is very concentrated, its confidence intervals is very tight, and it's far away from the observed healthy state. This is the first scenario, the scenario when we opened, opened the uh, electromagnetic valve in the top tank. Its influence on the second tank, which we observe here, is already smoothened. When we move to the third tank, it is even more smooth, with certain oscillation observed. Again, the plot has the same the same meaning, however, we are considering different signals. And again, despite that the signal is much more smooth, the data depth is still strongly discriminating between healthy and the considered outlier signal. When we move to the second scenario, uh, results are Similar, however, here we see the problem with splines. The problem that we observe here is that 
our line grid is a fixed one. It's a fixed one with a uniform distribution. The problem with assigning appropriate spline grid here is something that we haven't investigated much. Now what is interesting, despite the fact that the fault occurring here introduces very sharp change because generally we can assume is that we have uh, a discontinuity of the derivative in this uh, system because we've sharply changed the values in the system. It's still good enough in order to discriminate between our healthy and faulty system, especially that cons comparing the values from the from the third tank here with our healthy model, it is well into the 90% confidence interval of our model. However, it was very well discriminated from one another. When we move to the bottom tank, which is already a bit smoothened, our spline model fits very well, and again, we have a very tight confidence interval and a good discrimination. So for our simulation model, data depth works rather well in order to capture the behavior that we want. In case of experimental results, we can actually we got even a bit better results than we expected. Of course, we've analyzed the situation of the uh, second and third tanks. Why interesting changes to the uh, first one? So the smoothness is already here, but our model actually even works better for the uh, real data than for the artificial one, especially in capturing the interval. However, of course, we, our confidence interval is much less precise with having only 10 time series for uh, data evaluation. However, what we have here, we have a wider uh, confidence interval for the data depth of the, of the considered outlier. However, we can see that there is a significant difference between one and another. When we move to a third tank, again, we have a situation that can be observed here. We have our model rather well encapsulated the behavior of our healthy state and rather well captures the behavior of the faulty one. Data depth has here the widest confidence interval, but still we have very strong division between groups. Evidently, something is here. We can see that there is some kind of efficiency in this data depth analysis. However, there is a really lot more things that we should do. Our model is far from perfect. There is a justification from ana such analysis of model deviation from the considered trajectory because there is a support in the theory of uh, linear approximations of nonlinear systems. Natural skepticism suggests that results are a bit too good to be true. Probably in shorter time scales, there might be pro problems with capturing the behavior. So this is something that we will be investigating more. We need to look on the data depth, especially in the situations uh, that are located in the uh, logarithmic scale, because the problem is that those values are kind of close to each other. And we've tested data depth also using uh, just sample, the, just data, and the behavior was much, much worse than what we see, we see here. There was no discrimination between faults and the healthy states. And there might be problems if we analyze it further. And from our observation at the moment, increasing dimensionality is a problem. This is something that we really need to work on it and maybe be helpful for some kind of suggestions. If you are interested in our results, uh, you can find our data on GitHub. Our account is K-A-I-R-I-S-Z which is much better explained abbreviation in Polish, uh, but you can find it in, on GitHub and feel free to use our data and use our code if you are interested in this problem. And contact us if you have any more questions. Thank you very much and thanks for listening.